What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Don't forget to hit the bell notification button to be notified every time I upload a video on my channel. Now with ESPN's documentary about the Chicago Bulls during the 90s and Michael Jordan titled The Last Dance blowing up on Netflix, I thought it would be a good time to discuss a story that a lot of people haven't heard. If you guys haven't seen The Last Dance, go do yourself a favor and check it out. It's one of the best documentaries, in my opinion, on Netflix. And as someone who watched the Bulls during the 90s and played basketball, as well as averaged 22 points a game in my high school years, I can totally appreciate it. So this story involves the former Chicago Bulls player Dennis Rodman and a lawsuit stemming from tattoos from the biggest rock stars of the 90s. How did this happen? Stay tuned to find out. It all started with entrepreneur Mickey Goldschmidt, who attended a Guns N' Roses concert during the Use Your Illusion tour in the early 90s. After leaving the concert, he went home with a concert t-shirt that he wasn't really happy with. And if you've ever bought a concert tee, then you probably know the material is awful and they're way overpriced. His displeasure with the concert tee gave him an idea, and that was to start an apparel company called Fanatics, which was run out of his parents' basement. The whole concept of his apparel line was to showcase cool tattoos of his favorite rock stars, as he would tell Rolling Stone magazine. I kind of hate the t-shirt referring to the Guns N' Roses shirt he bought. I just want a shirt with Axl Rose tattoos. I'd had a prior t-shirt company that didn't go anywhere, but I felt like I knew a little about textiles. Ultimately, I loved the idea of a tattoo on a t-shirt. People want to be rock stars. They play air guitar, and I thought, what better way for a fan to connect with a rock star than through their tattoos? I made a bunch of shirts. Axel, Slash, Steven Tyler, Ozzy, Henry Rollins. The better the tattoos, the better the shirt, he'd say. Goldschmidt would reveal in the same interview how he actually was able to properly draw the tattoos of his favorite rock stars and artists before the days of the internet, telling the magazine how he and a tattoo artist, who was a friend, would record MTV on tape and would pause the screen anytime a rock star appeared shirtless on screen or in a sleeveless shirt. He'd also collect magazines like Rolling Stone, Metal Edge, and Hip Parader. And Goldschmidt would end up staking his claim on an untapped territory in the apparel market with his tattoo shirts. And the line was a huge hit. But once rock and roll apparel companies took notice of what Goldschmidt was doing, he got scared off. The rock and roll apparel companies were upset over the fact that Fanatics was not acquiring the proper licensing agreements required to use tattoos on the shirts. So Goldschmidt turned his attention to the world of professional sports. And the first athlete he ever made a tattoo shirt of was boxer Mike Tyson, who had a tattoo of Chinese leader Mao on his upper arm. However, once the boxer was convicted of rape charges and sent to prison, he opted not to release the shirt. It was now 1993 and basketball player Dennis Rodman had been traded to the San Antonio Spurs and started dating pop star Madonna. He also got inspired to make a shirt of Rodman's tattoos, but he barely sold any shirts initially. It wasn't until Rodman went to the Chicago Bulls in the mid-90s that things really took off. Once Rodman started playing in Chicago, Goldschmidt was able to track down a buyer who worked for the Bulls who agreed to take a box of free t-shirts. What happened next is truly mind-blowing. During one of the Bulls' regular season games in Chicago, Ahmad Rashad, who used to cover the NBA for NBC, went down to the Chicago Merchandise Store at the United Center and showed off some of the shirts for sale, and one of them, as you guessed, would be the Rodman tattoo shirt. Here's the clip. You can get almost anything. Look at this. This is a Dennis Rodman t-shirt. They have all his tattoos. There's the one he has on his belly. Here's the ones he has on his arm, over here, and on his back. See, you can get all that stuff. And Mark, I got this for you. And Matt, I wouldn't leave you out. Immediately following that coverage, Goldschmidt's sales exploded, but it also got the entrepreneur some unwanted attention. Immediately following the free promotion from NBC, he received an angry phone call from Rodman's agent. He would tell Rolling Stone, I got a fairly angry phone call from Rodman's agent, Dwight Manley. I get it, the guy was just doing his job, but he was not happy. He was like, you've got to stop selling these, you're not authorized. And the call made me a little nervous, and I certainly didn't like getting yelled at, but I was a 25-year-old and had a fairly independent spirit. I brushed it off, and I had just got an $80,000 order from Osco Drug, and there was no way I was stopping, not without something more official than a phone call. And at that time, I said to Manley, why don't we get a three-way phone call with Rodman and we work something out? But he wasn't having it. I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I was like, Rodman doesn't own those tattoos. He has no more right to Harley Davidson than I do. 
If anything, the tattoo artist should have copyright over those tattoos, he'd say. But after that phone call, Rodman's side lawyered up. They filed for immediate injunctive relief, and the judge granted it. A week or two later, I was standing in front of a federal judge who told me that I should not pursue this any longer. It was reported at the time that Rodman had in fact filed a $1 million lawsuit, and it was enough to scare Goldschmidt not to pursue the venture anymore. It would be ironic that three years after this happened, Rodman ended up selling his own tattoo t-shirts, and Goldschmidt would admit to Rolling Stone magazine that he was a bit annoyed by this move. So you're probably wondering, what happened to Goldschmidt? Well, he would end up becoming a successful entrepreneur legally. He currently runs a company that makes baby gear, including toys, sippy cups, bibs, and strollers that are rock and roll branded with the logos of bands, including the Beatles and the Grateful Dead. And as you can imagine, he's gotten the licenses for those band logos legally. So let me know your thoughts on the story down below. Would you guys ever buy tattoo shirts of your favorite rock stars? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, if you have suggestions, let me know them as well. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe guys, and we'll see you tomorrow on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.